In today's video, we will learn how routing works in Next.js, how to create pages, how to create nested routes, and how to create dynamic routes in Next.js. All these things are fundamental when creating applications with Next.js. And after this video, you will have a solid understanding on these fundamentals, so you can create your multi-page applications the correct way. Let's start by hopping on to the computer. So to start off, Next.js has two routers, the app router and the pages router. Pages router was the first router that Next.js had. And in Next.js 14, the app router was introduced as stable and it is now the go-to router to use. If you start a new project, you should use the app router because that's the direction that Next.js is going and it also supports all the latest features, for example, server components. Pages router is still supported, but I don't see any reason to use it in new project. So to sum it up, use app router in your projects. Now let's jump into the VS code. So over here, I just have a fresh Nexus project open where we will demonstrate how the routing and different things work. So Next.js uses something called file system based routing. And this means that the routing of the application is actually based on the files and folders in our project. So we don't need to maintain any routing files or such. And instead, our folder structure will always be an up to date projection of the routes we have. And since we are using the app router, we can create new routes and pages by placing the folders and files inside of this app folder over here. And to create a UI for a route, for example, slash block. So let's say we wanted to create a route for localhost 3000 slash block. So in order to do that, we would need to use a special Next.js file called page.tsx. So let's create that route right now. So I'm going to create a new folder inside the app directory called blog. So this is the route name. And then inside of that blog folder, I'm going to create a new file called page.tsx. And if you're not using TypeScript, if you're using JavaScript, you can use JSX also. And now in order to make this route accessible, we need to export a React component from this file. So let's add that like this. So now we should have a page where we are displaying the text block page when we go to slash block. So again, the folder name is the route. And then when we want to show a UI in that route, we are adding a page file. So let's test it out by firing up our dev server and let's open it up in browser. So now we are in the root of our application. So let's go to the slash block. Like this. And over there we have our text block page displayed. So that's how to create a page in Next.js. But let's say we wanted to create a slash block slash archive route. So how could we do this? Well, that's where the nested routes come in. And since we are using the file system based routing, we can create nested routes by nesting folders inside of each other and then adding a page inside of them. So let's see how to do that. So if we want to create slash block slash archive, all we have to do is add a folder inside of our block folder called archive like this, and then add a page file inside of it like this. And again, let's export a component from here like this and let's test it out. So we are now on the block page. So if we go slash block slash archive, we get the archive page. So now we have two pages in our application. Uh, but let's say we wanted to add at the top of the page a navigation menu. We could do this by adding the navigation for the archive page and then for the uh, block page. And let's actually name this block list. So it's a little bit clearer. Okay, so we could add them over these files, but there is actually a better way to do this. As I mentioned earlier, the page.tsx file is a special Next.js file. And there in fact is other special files in Next.js too. Page file is just the one we use the most. But another file I think is important to go through now is the layout file. So with layout file, we can create a UI that is shared between multiple pages. 
And a good example of where we could use a layout file is when we want to add this kind of navigation to our pages. So let's see how to use the layout file to add the navigation to our blog application. So what I'm going to do is add a layout.tsx file in our blog folder. Like this. And then I'll add some code over here and let's go through it together. Okay, so what I did here is again, we are exporting React component and this time it gets the children as a prop. And in the return statement, we are returning a navigation with some links to our blog page and to the blog archive page. And then we are also rendering the children. So in this case, the children is the contents of those pages that we want to display. And as you noticed, we placed the layout file inside the blog folder. So right now this layout is applied to this uh, blog page and it is also applied to the nested pages. So for this archive page. So now we should have all this HTML displayed whenever we are opening the blog page or the blog archive page. So let's save this and check it out. So now we are at the slash blog and we can see the two links up here. So now if I click the blog archive, it will take me to the slash blog slash archive and still display this uh, navigation. And I can go back to the blog list and it will go to the slash block and still display this navigation. So the layout file is a way to share code and components between different pages if you want to show the same thing on all of those pages. So yeah, now we have the block page, block archive page and the navigation displayed with the uh, layout file. So far we have only used nested routes with static paths. For example, the slash block or slash block slash archive. But in real world applications, we also need to be able to add dynamic parameters to the URLs. For example, if we have a blog post that we want to view, we most likely want to add the blog post ID to the URL. So the URL would be something like slash blog slash post slash the post ID. So let's see how we can add this kind of blog post page by using the dynamic routes. So in order to add a dynamic route, let's first add a new folder to our block folder called post. Because again, we want the route to be slash block slash post slash the post ID. Then inside of this folder, we are actually going to create a new folder because now the last parameter, so the ID, it's dynamic and we don't know what it is beforehand. So in order to use a dynamic parameter for the route, we need to add brackets and then the parameter name and closing bracket like this. And this variable name ID could be anything, but in this case, we have the post ID in there. So I'm going to name it ID. And then again, as previously, when we want to add an UI for the route, we create the page file. So let's add a new file page.tsx like this. And now let me add some code over here and let's go through it together then. Okay, like this. So again, we are exporting the React component from here, but now we can get as a parameter, a parameter called params. And inside of that will be the route uh, variables or the variables from our routes. So in this case, we named it ID over here. So we can access the ID from the params like this. And just to demonstrate this, I'm just printing here blog post and then the blog post ID. But in real world, you would want to use this ID to fetch the blog post from a database, for example. But let's test this out. So I'm going to switch back to the browser. And now let's go to the route slash blog slash post and then the ID. And now we don't have any post IDs, but let's say it would be 111 like this. So when I'm going into that route, we get the text, blog post, and then the ID. And now if we change this a little bit, it changes also over here. So this is how to create a route that you don't know all the parts of yet. For example, when you need to show a blog post with an ID. Next, we need a way to navigate between our pages and routes. And we already added navigation between pages into the layout file 
over here using the next link component. But that is just one of the ways to navigate between pages in Next.js. In this situation, the link was the right way to go, but choosing the correct method for a given situation is vital in order to build efficient Next.js applications. And in this video on the screen, I'll show you all the different methods you can use to handle navigation in Next.js.